Welcome St. John's family, friends, and guests. We just encourage you to fill out the brown welcome pad in the middle of your pew. And if you have any prayer requests, we encourage you to fill those out and hand those to the ushers during our first praise song. Please rise and face the back of the cross for confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and in one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We will sing our praise Him, create Him, or crown Him. Crown him with many crowns, the Lamb upon his throne, our call the 
Let us pray. O oh God, our true life to serve you in freedom and to know you is unending joy. We worship you, we glorify you, we give thanks to you for your great glory. Abide with us, reign in us, and make this world into a fit habitation for your divine majesty. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Go ahead. The first reading is from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 23. Judah's unjust rulers have caused their people, their flock, to be scattered. Nevertheless, the Lord will raise up a new and righteous shepherd who will rule a restored Judah, the Messiah, Jesus. The reading from Jeremiah. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people. It is you who have scattered my flock and driven them away, and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doing, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of the lands where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The word of the Lord. Please join in a responsive prayer of Luke 1. Blessed be the Lord of God, Lord God of Israel, for he has looked favorably on his people and redeemed for them. As he spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from old, that we would be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. The oath that he swore to our ancestor Abraham to grant us that we, being rescued from the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways. By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us. The second reading is from the book of Colossians, chapter 1. St. Paul makes it clear, Christ has first place in everything. The reading from Colossians. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power. And may you be prepared to endure everything with patience, while joyfully giving thanks to the Father, who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning 
the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have a first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. The word of the Lord. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 23rd chapter. Amid scoffing and slander from the insincere and unbelieving, Jesus reveals that to be Messiah and King is to give one's life for others. Here he uses his power to welcome a despised sinner to paradise. A reading from Luke. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus, where with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching, but the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself. If he is the Messiah of God, his his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who was hung hang there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do not fear, do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kin kingdom. Jesus replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. I invite the children to come up for the children's message. <laughs> we'll stand over here. Look at all the children. You guys look all awake and bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. I'm so glad you're here this morning. So I have a story for you. And so I have a book to share with you. So this book is called The Wallingford Winners. And that is a town that I live in in Wallingford. But you don't really, you can't really tell what this book is about by what it says on the outside but in the inside it shows that it is a recipe book and this is some of the winning recipes from the Wallingford Church in Iowa so does anybody know what a recipe book is yeah it does it helps you kind of gives you the the instructions on how to make 
a meal, right, or make something special? Absolutely. So that is what a recipe does. So there is another recipe book for our lives. What is that, do you think? The Holy Bible. You betcha. And we love that because it gives us instruction on how to live, right? And there's another recipe inside here, other than all the other recipes, but there's one particular one in Matthew 6, and it teaches us how to pray. It's called the Lord's Prayer. Do you know what the Lord's Prayer, have you ever prayed the Lord's Prayer? Right, every, every Sunday we pray it, pray it, right after the words of institution, right? We pray the Lord's Prayer, and I bet sometimes some of you pray it at home. But God gives us instruction on how to pray through the Lord's Prayer. And so, I have a couple things for you. So, you're going to get a piece of candy, which when you get that piece of candy, I want you to think about the recipe that went into making that really scrumptious piece of chocolate, right? But any, when you're thinking about that, be reminded that God gives you a recipe as well. He gives you a recipe on how to live, and he gives you a recipe on how to pray. So now one thing we do have to do is we're going to do the noisy offering after we pray. So I want your help with that, if you would. And then when you're done collecting the noisy offering, then you can come back and collect your treat. Does that sound good? All right, let's pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for giving us the recipe, your recipe book. And Lord, thank you for giving us the Lord's Prayer. Lord, thank you for all these children and all these members and all of those that sit in the pews and stand up here today. Lord, thank you for making us and helping us make us great through your holy word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you can grab a cup and go out and... High five, buddy. <laughs> you can get a treat if you want. <laughs> yep, you can. And get a treat if you want over there. Thank you, guys. Thank you. There's treats over there if you want a treat. <laughs> Good job, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Well, grace and peace to you from God, our Father, Lord, and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So before we start the sermon today, we're going to just do a quick skit. And I have Bartolo, uh, one of our confirmands, uh, playing God for us today. So if you bear with me for a minute, we're going to just have a quick skit before the sermon begins.
Our Father who art in heaven. Yes. I can't hear you. Is there a thing to flip on? Yeah. There we go. Yes. You might need to get closer. Yeah. Yes. Don't interrupt me. I'm praying. But you called me. Called you? I didn't call you. I was praying. Our Father who art in heaven. There. You did it again. Did what? Called me. You said, Our Father who art in heaven. Here I am. What's on your mind? But I didn't mean anything by it. I was, you know, just saying my prayers for the day. I always say the Lord's Prayer. It makes me feel good, sort of like getting a good job done. All right, go on. Hallowed be thy name. Hold it. What do you mean by that? By what? By hallowed be thy name. It means, it means good grief. I don't know. How should I know what it means? It's just part of the prayer. But by the way, what does it mean? It means honored, holy, wonderful. Ah, that makes sense. I never thought about what hallowed meant before. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Do you really mean that? Of course, why not? What are you going to do about it? Do? What am I going to do about it? Nothing, I suppose. I just think it would be rather good if you got things under control like you did up there. Have I got control of you? Got control of me? Well, I go to church. That isn't what I asked you. What about that bad temper? You've really got a problem, you know. Stop picking on me. I'm just as good as all some of those hypocrites down at the church. Excuse me, but I thought you were praying for my will to be done. If that is to happen, it will have to start with the ones who are praying for it, like you, for example. Oh, all right. I guess I do have a few hang-ups. Now that you mention that, I probably could, I could name a few, probably. So could I. (laughs) I haven't thought about it much until now, but I really would like to cut out some of those things. I really would like to know how to be free. Good. Now we're getting somewhere. We'll work together, you and I. Some real victories will be won. I'm proud of you. Look, Lord, I need to finish this up here. This is taking a lot longer than it usually does. Give us this day our daily bread. Maybe you need to cut out the bread. You're a little overweight as it is. Hey, wait a minute. What is this? Here I am, doing my religious duty, and all of a sudden, you break in and remind me of all my faults. Praying praying is a dangerous thing. You could end up changed, you know. That's why I'm trying to get bring across to you. You called me, and here I am. It's too late to stop now. Keep on praying. I'm interested in the next part of your prayer. Well, go on. I'm I'm scared to. Scared of what? Of what you're going to say next. Try me and see. Forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. What about Peter Brown? See, I knew you'd bring him up. Why, Lord, he told lies about me. He cheated me out of some money. I swear I'll get even with him. But your prayer, what about your prayer? I didn't mean it. Well, at least you're honest, but it's not much fun carrying around that load of bitterness inside, is it? No, but I'd feel better as soon as I get even. Have I got some plans for old Peter? You won't feel any better. You'll feel worse. Revenge isn't sweet. Think about how unhappy you really are. But I'll change all that. You will? How? Forgive Peter, then I'll forgive you. Then the hate and sin will be Peter's problem and not yours. You may lose the money, but you will have settled your heart. It doesn't sound easy, but deep down I know it would be worth the effort. Thank you, Lord, for helping me work through this. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So this skit is a bit quirky, I realize, but it brings home a point about how God gives us instruction through 
the Lord's Prayer. And before I tell you, go in and we'll talk more about the Lord's Prayer, I want to tell you a quick story. So once upon a time, there was a father. A father who had a child. And that father loved that child like no other. The father taught the child to walk, to talk, to feed itself. The father loved that child, and the child loved the father. But the child grew up and got old, older, and decided it no longer needed the father. And this made the father very sad. The father knew that he could not force or make the child want to have a relationship with him. The father knew that all he could do was sit and wait. Now this story, before you start thinking about the child as some sort of nin nincompoop, um, this story is about our Heavenly Father. And we are his children. There is statistics out there of mainline Protestants that say people that sit in church pews like you and I every Sunday or Saturday night, and those statistics say that 46% of those that sit in the pews every day pray every day. Just 46%. It's a pretty staggering number. And the thing that I think God and how he instructs, instructs us in the Lord's Prayer is, is that, that prayer is such a privilege that he gives us that he actually even teaches us how, how we should pray. God wants to have us have a relationship with us, and he sits and waits. In Matthew 6, 5, it's, er, six, yeah, 6, verse 5, I love how a, he puts it, it's right before he gives the instructions of the Lord's Prayer. He says, And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners, and to be seen by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you even ask it. And I love that. There's a lot of reasons people get hung up in prayer. And, and I, I think of some of those things, and one of the things, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, is probably one of them for me because I like to have it be my way, my will, my idea, God. And sometimes, you know, we pray and we say, God, heal me from cancer, or let this person not be taken from my life through death. And we pray hard, and we pray, and we pray, and we pray, and yet those things still happen that are painful in our life. But this is where we are hung up, because it says, thy will be done, not my, not my will. Another piece of that goes into give us a daily bread. And so unlike God telling me I'm eating too much bread, there's a little more to the daily bread than in the, in the Lord's Prayer. Daily bread is those things that you need in your life. So when you are praying for daily bread, you are not just praying for food, but you are praying for give me a faithful spouse, a, 
a job that supports me, my family, my friends, and neighbors. You are praying for all of those things in daily bread. And lead us not into temptation. So this one, sometimes you think, well, God, are you leading me into temptation? But James 1.13 says, God does not tempt us. God does not lead us into temptation. But the enemy, the devil, the sinful world, our sinful selves do. And so we must pray that we're not led into temptation. God knows that prayer is one of the most powerful weapons that we have in our back pocket. But the enemy, the devil, knows this as well. So if I were the enemy, I would want you to wait until the very last minute, the very last hour of the day when you lay your head on the pillow and snuggle yourself up and get nice and warm and comfortable in your bed. That's when I would want you to pray so maybe you would just be too tired to say amen. Now, if you're a confirmation student, you know what amen means. Amen means yes, yes, it shall be so. I lay in bed at night and pray And I will lay, and a voice will say, just roll over, it's okay, you'll stay awake. And so I roll over, and I pull the covers up a little closer to my chin, and you can bet that I will fall asleep before amen comes. I think that the quickest way for me to fall asleep is to start saying my prayers. So I would challenge you to be intentional Students, I would challenge you every time that Snapchat pops up on your phone and the minute that it does, you say, praise God for Snapchat, (laughs) right? Or the moment that you want to get on Facebook and see what the neighbor is doing, praise God for technology or whatever, but let it be a reminder of prayer. If I were the enemy, I wouldn't want you to make a list. I wouldn't want you to be strategic about prayer. I wouldn't want you to give the first fruits of the day to God because I know the power that prayer has. If I were the enemy, I would want you to fear God's plan. Zach Williams, a a singer, a Christian contemporary singer that I just love, um, brings it home pretty good. And so we are going to play a quick clip for you. Isaiah 41.10 says, Fear not, for I am with you. Fear not. We watch a lot of football right now, and so I think about how we are on God's team. He is on our sideline. He picked us. He wants us to be active, tenacious players in the game. Elvis sang a song. It wasn't his song, but he sang one in it, and the lyrics speak to me. It says, it's an oldie, it says, put your hands in the hand of the man who stills the water. Put your hands in the hands of the man who calms the sea. Take a look at yourself and you can look at others differently. If you put the hands in the hand of the man from Galilee. Oh, man.
may be seated. Let us pray. Lord of mercy, we cry to you for help, trusting in your compassion for your whole creation. Raise up the baptized to offer Christ healing and forgiveness to all in distress. Lord, in your mercy. We seek the kingdom that cannot be shaken. Come to the rescue of those who are displaced by war, famine, and other disaster. Provide deliverance and justice to all who are oppressed. Lord, in your mercy. You know our needs in the community. Heal the hurts of all bent over with sickness, aging, suffering, especially Trish, Lorraine, Moni, Dylan, Vern, Diane, Robin, Walker, Alex, Cade, Mel, Cole and Jeanette, Dave, Patrick and Matthew, Neoma, Linda, Luann, Doug, Edie, and Sherry and Larry and all those who we name in our hearts at this time. Accompany those who visit the homebound members, the hospitalized, and those who are in prison. Lord, in your mercy. All these things and more we ask in the name of our risen Lord Jesus Christ, by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. Please share in God's peace.
please rise for prayer. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and he gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you, for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Gathered into one, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Come all now is ready. of sadness from wherever you've been. Come broken hearted, let rescue begin. Come find your mercy, O sinner, come near. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can heal. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can heal.
sinner be still. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can heal. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can heal. Lay down your And may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love towards one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We will continue standing for our final song. Everyone needs compassion. Love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of the Savior. The
may be seated. So we have a quick uh, clip for you, Lee. We, uh, if you can hear it, we'll get it started here. Isn't she adorable? Come on, the Jennerys and the Deriders need adorable faces like this on their list because they need baby Jesuses for December 2020. Bethlehem Revisited is on its way. Got to pre-plan these things. Anybody can have an adorable little face like this in their family. Maybe it's your children. Maybe it's you, maybe it's your grandchildren, great-grandchildren, neighbor, anybody that you know, please ask if their baby would love the opportunity to play baby Jesus next December 2020 for St. John's Church. Wardrobe is provided, snacks provided, warm, warm room with the rocking chair provided. Shepherds will take care of them. They don't have to learn any lines. They can sit behind a beautiful blue soft light in amongst the straw and the soft, soft noise of the animals. Come on, put somebody's name on the list with this adorable little child that can play baby Jesus next 2020. Oh, who's this? Well, this is Emma Shostak, daughter of Brandon and Amy Shostak. She'll be a little too old by then, but if you get on the stick right now and get some pre-planning taken care of, you can offer them a child to play baby Jesus in December 2020. Oh, by the way, she's my granddaughter. Hey, St. John's, how you doing? Miss ya. Was asked to give this temple talk, so here I am. My reproductive temple pep talk. Go, St. John's, go. Spread the word. Get those names on the list. They'll take as many babies as possible. Okay, that's your task. Take care. Miss ya. Talk to you again. Bye-bye. <laughs> I'm not signing. I am not signing up for the reproductive part. <laughs> That's somebody much younger than me. Oh, good stuff. So welcome, uh, members and guests. We have visitor bags. If you are a visitor here, we are so glad that you are here. And we have visitor bags by the doors, and we'd um, love for you to take one home with you. So thank you for being here today. Also. For some added excitement for this Sunday, we have bowling, family bowling, today at 1 o'clock. Go home and eat and go to the bowling alley at 1 o'clock and have some fun uh, with St. John's. Also, this evening, if you want a full day, uh, you can go to uh, the community Thanksgiving meal or Thanksgiving service that we're having at Rock Solid Assembly. It's all the churches that co have come together and are doing a, a Thanksgiving service. So happy Thanksgiving, by the way, and uh, we would love for you to join in this Thanksgiving service at Rock Solid at four o'clock. There is some really great speakers that are going to be telling you about what God is doing in and amongst the community of Lamar. So love to have you there. Also, uh, mission trip, last call for the 2020 service trip application. Uh, forms and deposits are due into uh, Kirsten and by December 1st. And there is some really wonderful things. If you go into Living Lutheran on the web, you can see how Pine Ridge and what um, great things that we can as n not only youth but adults as well. So would love to see a bunch of adults um, sign up. Um, I am super excited about this trip and I hope you are too. So uh, get in your application and become part of something really great. Also, there is the Family Advent Activities. You can pick those up um, by the library, one per family. And then also, uh, would you be willing to provide special music for Christmas Eve? And one thing I love about St. John's is all the wonderful varieties of music, and that takes a team of people. So if you are musically inclined, we would love, Mike would love to have you. So. Also, it's time to order poinsettias, so you've seen those little slips, and get those in. Um, make sure the deadline is December 9th. And then the Browns Theater is having the innkeeper, and we're selling tickets here in the office just like we did the last time, and you can uh, get with the office in order to get those tickets purchased. And then don't forget to buy your tickets for the tour of homes. This is a great um, fundraiser for our youth and 
We love to support them in all that they do. And busing will be provided. Busing so. will be provided. Okay, <laughs> good to know. Good to know. That's know. good. Also, I have heard that J St. John's does it up big for Christmas with decorations. I've heard rumor, and I am super excited to be a part of that. So if you are as excited about Christmas as me, we would love for you to be involved in the decoration. We also need ushers and greeters and people to serve communion. So uh, please sign up for those things. It takes a church to make all those happen. So um, also uh, watch for the congregation Christmas card in the bulletin board. And then donations go to St. John's Welfare Fund. Uh, and you can donate through Tithely, uh, the Tithely app on your smartphone as well. Also, thank you so much for the donations that you gave for the family fun boxes. It was a wonderful amount of giving that you all participated in, and you have done a wonderful thing to make an impact um, on those people um, that need it here in Lamar's. And with that, please rise for the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Shine in my land.